you low down, good for nothing, selfish pastors and church leaders destroy people's lives because you want to feel good for a few minutes. Well, I got a prophecy for me, for you. Straight from the oracles of the almighty God. How did you get her to church? Sorry, I have some bad news for you today. Your pastor ain't God. Some pastors have destroyed people's lives. They hurt the people they claim to love. They hurt the people they claim to love. The hurt they employ transcends generations. And they're going to pay for it. What does this mean? What does it mean when you had a bad experience at a bad church with a bad pastor? I got a message for you pastors. You pastors that hurt people. The people that make up the demographics of your neighborhood, brother pastor, include the highest poverty rate, the highest incarceration rate, the highest in oppression. You couple that with substance abuse and you pastors have no solutions. Your zip code, the one that you've been sweating and hacking and preaching in has the highest crime in the entire city and you're busy taking your own people's money. In all my years of witnessing on the streets, I have never, I have never heard anybody say they won't get saved because of the musicians. Well, I have never heard anybody say they won't come to church because the music is horrible or because the choir can't sing. They always say it's because of the pastor. Yeah. You dirty, filthy hireling. You drove past the sister on the bus stop with your heat on full blast, with your leather seats and your heated steering wheel, sitting nice, sitting pretty, while the sister sitting on the bus stop in the cold at night. After you just robbed God's people with your gimmicks and your tricks. You, you make people poor -er. You make poor people poorer with your gimmicks, with your foolishness, with your God gonna bless you. You low down, good for nothing, selfish pastors and church leaders destroy people's lives because you want to feel good for a few minutes. Well, I got a prophecy for me, for you. Straight from the oracles of the almighty God. Jeremiah 23. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, said the Lord. Amen. Who said it? Lord. God said it. Amen. I'm so glad God's got the last word. I'm so glad God is a God of judgment. I'm so glad that God gives what well, God gives judgment. He's a God of war. Yeah. God is not playing with you pastors. Yeah. I'm so glad that God loves his people. He loves his people so much that he declared there's a day of judgment for bad pastors. The ones that destroy his people. You're not getting away with it. You going to get it. Yeah. If you ever been hurt by a spiritual leader, take solace in knowing that your pain is not in vain. Hey pastors, why y'all getting mad at me? I got another prophecy for you. Just for you. Well, while you're trying to condemn everyone else to hell, let's read Jeremiah 23 verse 2. Three. Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel, yes. against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away mm -hmm. and have not visited them. Behold, that means watch out. That means watch what's going to happen. I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, said the Lord. Amen. How come your pastors never read these scriptures? No, no, no. Dear pastors, auxiliary leaders, yes. deacons, yes. elders, evangelists, and prophet liars. Amen. Please don't think the Lord didn't see what you did. What does it say in verse 14? I, who, God, have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem... And horrible thing. Yes. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evil doers. You did nothing about it when you knew something was going on. Well, you didn't do anything. You put them in positions. Well, you put them in places so they can do this filthy stuff that they're doing. Yes. The Bible says that none doth return from his wickedness. Yes. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. You preach about Sodom and Gomorrah. Preach about yourself. Amen. God said you are to him that the same people that he destroyed in Sodom. How come you don't preach about that, brother pastor? 
We ministers, we preachers, we teachers, we all over the world have been telling people to go to church. They've been listening to us and they've been going to church and getting their lives destroyed. This is a sad truth that needs to be addressed. We have Amen. to talk about it. Somebody right. got to talk about Amen. it. Next week, we're going to talk about Amen. the role of a pastor. How much power and authority should that pastor have? This week, Preach. we're going to talk about these no good, nasty, diabolical, megalomaniac, dishonorable, lying, greedy, lustful pastors that Amen. think they're getting away with it. You should have never been wrapped up in a pastor like that. You know right. why? Because the arms of flesh will always fail you. Always. God didn't call every so-called pastor. God warned us about them. Verse 21, same chapter. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet, yet they, they prophesied. All right. Here God is letting you know that every pastor has not been called or sent by him. You may have been preyed on by a predator, but the Bible gives some insight, some wisdom, so that it never happens again. When you know better, you, do better. you should do better. Every pastor has not been called by God. I don't care about the good feeling you got in church. I don't care about the emotional high you felt when you was in church. I don't care about the time you called your pastor and he came and things worked out. John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Do you know how to try a spirit? By the spirit. God is warning you about these piece of garbage pastors that everybody's scared to talk about. Everybody's scared to say something about it. If you're a bad pastor, you're just a bad pastor. Amen. Enjoy your trip to hell. That's right. Let me help somebody. Do it. Help. Did you know that you have, you do not, you do not have to listen to these clowns as they prophesy. Same chapter, verse 16 says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. I come to declare to you today that whatever happened to you is not your fault. What you went through is not your fault. Whatever these worthless pastors did to you is not your fault. Of course, I'm not talking about all pastors. I'm talking about the ones that the Bible is talking about. Y'all remember what happened to King Saul? God gave Saul specific instructions. In verse number 9 of Samuel 15, it says, You see where Saul spared Agag. You know the story when Saul was rejected? Rejected. I want y'all to remember that word. Rejected. He was rejected from being king. In verse 23, it tells you why. Because disobedience is rebellion. And rebellion is witchcraft. See how spirits work together? You remember Legion when Jesus ran upon Legion? And what did Legion say? Don't cast us out of this area. Don't cast us out of this region. They didn't care about being cast out. They didn't want to get cast out of this region because they already set up shop. They're already working. You got this spirit over here working with this spirit over here. You got the lying spirit working with the lustful spirit. You got the murdering spirit working with the, this spirit. And they didn't mind being cast into to pigs, into swine. They'll just start all over again. But he didn't want them to be cast out of that area because spirits work together. That's why you should stay away from sin. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So God told Samuel, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Rejected. Okay. Verse 14 of Samuel uh, 16. But the spirit of the Lord departed Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Right! Did you catch that? Where did the evil spirit come from? Are you telling me that God is in control of even evil spirits? Yes, God is a master formulator. He's a master planner. He's in full control. Nothing just happens. Nothing catches God off guard. You think what you went through, God doesn't know about it? God gave Saul the evil spirit. God gave Saul the evil spirit. God gave Saul the evil spirit. 
Why? So that he would need a young kid like David to come and play, to play that evil spirit off of him. Sometimes the thing that God uses to set us up is evil. Because evil makes you move. Evil makes you move from here to there. Sometimes God uses bad for good. Even though David is about to go through the worst time of his life, God is using Saul and an evil spirit to set David up to be king. Hey, David, you're going to be king. You're going to be the greatest king Israel ever had. But you got to go through this stuff first. You got to deal with this evil first. God always has a plan. He's a master planner. He's a master formulator. Not too long after David killed Goliath. That's a big thing. Saul, the king at that time, got jealous of little old David and tried to kill him. One time that when that evil spirit was on him, you know, that same evil spirit that's on your boss, that same evil spirit that's on your supervisor, that evil spirit made Saul take a javelin. Took the javelin, threw it at David, tried to kill him. We don't want to accept that God can be involved in the evil part. The, the, the javelin was designed to kill him. But did it kill you though? It missed. What happened to you was designed to take you out. But this weapon, or no weapon, did it kill you though? Thank God you're still here. Take a moment. Whatever you just went through, whatever you went through at that church, whatever that pastor went through, you're strong, you're powerful. It didn't kill you. While David is running for his life, verse 4, you see that David saw Saul in the cave. Snuck up on him. I think he was sleeping at the time. And verse 4 says, Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. Snuck up on him. Took a piece of his skirt, his coat, his, his uh, uh, outfit. Went across where it was safe. Hey, Saul, look what I got. I could have killed you if I wanted you. Listen, we as humans, we're driven to negativity. When your child brings home a report card, and it has all A's on it, but one C. What do you focus on? You almost say nothing about the A's, right? First Samuel 24, 5. And it came to pass afterwards that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. David fooled around and had a heart attack. And he said in verse number 6, I believe, yes, verse number 6, he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. You catch that? Seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. In this context, do you see grace? Do you see sovereignty? Do you see God's faithfulness? Or do you, just, do you only see judgment? Look at all the good stuff that's in here. We got a sinner, Saul, being considered anointed? Why is Saul being considered anointed if he disobeyed God? Why is he afforded the benefits of someone that's anointed if God rejected him? Why did David call him anointed if he's being troubled by an evil spirit? Anybody got any answer to that? Why are you not allowed to touch God's anointed? If you say because the Bible says touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. That scripture came way after this. If there's one thing you better not do, if there's one class of people that you better not mess with, that's God's anointed. The Bible says don't do it. Pastors would lead you to believe that this is only talking about them, as if they're the only ones that's anointed. But if you've ever been filled with the Holy Ghost, you are anointed. If you've ever been filled with the Holy Ghost, you have Jesus Christ dwelling within you. The word Christ means the anointed one. You can't get more anointed than having Jesus Christ himself. 2 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 21 says, Now he which established us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. God has anointed us. If you don't have the Holy Ghost yet, make this your year to receive him. Why not? Why wait and see what's going to happen? Why not get every gift God has for you? 
If you've been filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the anointed one down in your soul. And no one is allowed to touch you without a penalty. Even when you mess up. Saul had a space of time to repent, sadly. He chose to add sin to sin. You don't have to do that. No one is allowed to touch you. No one is allowed to touch you. No one is allowed to touch you. You are God's anointed. You are God's treasure. You are peculiar. You are special and God will avenge you. But be careful. While I might be tempted to go around lifted up in pride and say I'm big and untouchable, it's not a license to sin. Sin is still a problem. Humble yourself. Too much is given, much is required. Salvation is much. That's why your pain was not in vain. Think about it. God chose you out of all your classmates. God chose you out of all your siblings, your neighbors. You ever go somewhere where there's a crowd of people, a bunch of people, and you begin to pray and think, man, I wonder if I'm the only one here thinking about God. I wonder if I'm the only one here praising God. God chose you out of all your friends. God chose you out of all your coworkers because you're special. God didn't make a mistake when he chose you. And you didn't trick him when you yielded to temptation. You didn't catch him off guard when you sinned. You didn't put a fast one on him. You think because you were indoors, you think because your roof, your, your walls is blocked. You, you think your walls block the eyes of an all seeing omniscient God. God made a calculated decision when he called you. He decided with all your proclivity, he decided with all your mistakes that you will eventually get it right. God made a precision decision that you were worth it. Your pain ain't in vain. What does Psalms 94 verse nine say? He that planted the ear, God who put the ear on you, shall he not hear? He that formed the eye, shall he not see? God hears your prayers, he's seen your tears, he knows the evil that happened to you. 1 Samuel 26, verse 9. And David said to Ab Abishai, Destroy him not. Do not kill Saul. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? If you're watching this video, God is talking to you. Listen, the person that hurt you will not be guiltless. They will not get away with hurting you. That includes a bad pastor. If you've been hurt by a pastor, you are currently filled with enough power to make it back home. Where is home? Well, Revelation 21 verse three says, that day is coming, that God will tabernacle. That means live, that means dwell. He's going to dwell with men, not in the ark, not in the temple, not in the sanctuary. He's still currently present with you. You've allowed sin to make you think God no longer wants you. Sin makes you think, well, I might as well continue living the way I'm living. You think because continuing in your current lifestyle, which is the pathway of least, uh, the, the easiest road to travel, the, the least resistance, you may have allowed shame to keep you from saying, Lord, I'm sorry, in the current state that you're in. You figure it don't make sense since I'm going to wake up tomorrow and continue the same lifestyle. But deep down inside, inside of your soul, you're yearning for your Savior. You miss feeling his presence, don't you? You miss hearing his voice. You remember what it felt like to be in good fellowship with him. You remember what your first love truly was. You have even reached out for God. But you were immediately met with defeat when you thought about going back to church. That church. Who said anything about church? Turn back to God. I talked to a person not too long ago about turning back to God. First thing out of their mouth. We don't have a church in the city. That's why some people are still in the situation they're in. Because somebody lied to them and told them they have to go back here or have to go over there. I'm begging you to start talking to God. God got a whole new life for you. He still loves you. He's waiting on you. He still wants to help you. It's not your fault. But when you know better, you do better. Hearken to the voice of God and not man. 
I'm not even sure why pastors want so much control anyway. I have never been able to figure it out. I don't understand why they want so much power over people anyway. I don't get it. You don't need a pastor trying to control you. Because flesh will always fail you. Your pastor ain't God. Listen, God is a jealous God. He ain't going to share you with nobody. God don't need anybody standing in his stead. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. There's only one mediator named Jesus. I heard somebody call their pastor their leader. Well, the scripture says the Holy Ghost will guide you. You think you should be obedient, subject to your pastor? Well, I need a pastor to explain this then. Explain the scripture. Jeremiah 42, 6. Whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of our pastor. No. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. God has a package suspended in animation waiting on you, hovering over your head. Waiting on you. Waiting on your soul to cry out to him. There are people that survived this situation. They'll tell you once they return back to God, everything lined up. Step by step, right in order. Even the bad stuff. It all worked out for good. They've been hurt by a pastor, but they recovered. You can too. There's a blessing of peace waiting on you. You'll wake up one morning in tranquility when you return to God, not a pastor. What they did to you is evil. That's why we need men to stand up in our community. To protect our women. Where the real men at? Where the real fathers at? That handle their business. And won't stand to see one of these, their sisters destroyed by a crooked pastor. I need y'all to stand with me. I need some men to stand with me. Let's fight for our daughters. Let's fight for our nieces. Some of them are still in a church and don't know how to leave. Some of them that left the church faced the worst backlash you've ever seen. They've been ostracized. They've been demonized. They've been talked about. They have been, people have told them don't talk to them no more. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the, the workers of iniquity? Me. This ministry, covenant servants, we'll stand up for you. True love church of Jesus Christ. We're all here to help. We got your back. We're here to represent you. We're here in alignment to support you. We understand the process of healing. We understand the process of getting closure. We have people here right now that can tell you their success story. Your pain was not in vain. Contact us today. Let's talk about it. Let's get back to God. We're not looking for you to change anything. Just talk to him. If you forgot how to pray, contact us. We'll pray with you. Whatever we need, we got two ministries here. Two ministries here ready to help you, to pray for you. Whatever you need, the table is spread. And the feast of the Lord is going on. Why not join us? Let us help you. Next week, we'll hear from a woman that has recovered from church hurt. So subscribe now so you'll be notified. Sunday on this same channel, you hear from Pastor Ivy. He's going to be dealing with the same issue. We're going to be dealing with the same issue every Friday, every Sunday throughout this month. We're going to kill this demon graveyard dead. Where the real man at? I need your help. Yep, I need your help. We're offering healing to all of those people that's been hurt, by, been battered by church leaders. All of this month, that's what we're going to do. If you want to tell your story, you can do it right now. You can come on here right now. This is a safe place to tell your story. We're here right now and we're ready. Here's your chance to start the healing process. If you want to talk about it, it's the perfect time to do it. Wherever you are, Whatever time you're watching this video, I don't care if it's a year later or a month later, you can still contact us. Go to uh, covenantservant.com. Go to the, the contact page. Forget about the date. You can do this right now. You tell your story. You can get some help. And notice when you go to our website, there's no donation page. Because we don't want your money. Use it to take care of your family. We want to see you made whole. We want to help you. If you have a testimony you want to share, go ahead and comment. Or share it now on our page. We're here to help. We're here to help. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate you. We're here. We're going to be here all night. Go ahead. Leave a comment. Let us know. Thank you.